Hi everyone, in this lab I'll show you how you can deliver a cross-site scripting attack to our victim by exploiting a DOM-based cross-site scripting vulnerability within the application. The vulnerable web application in this lab is a blog. We'll pass our payload to the location.hash property on the homepage of the blog, where it will be executed by the vulnerable jQuery selector function the blog is using to auto-scroll to a specific blog post. I have a link to the lab in the video description if you want to give it a go yourself. Let's get into it. So let's have a look here. From the lab description, we know that the vulnerability is present within the blog homepage. So right here. And we also know that it's a DOM-based cross-site scripting vulnerability. So let's open the developer console in Firefox by pressing F12. And we're essentially looking for two things. We're looking for an input that we can control. And we're looking for that input to be passed to a piece of code or a function that will then execute our payload, our input. So let's go from inspector to the debugger tab. And then I'm going to send this to a new space, just to have a bit more room available. I'm going to hit uh, Shift Command F to search through all files, and I'm going to look for all scripts. I'm not going to close the tag, just search for this. So we find all variations. And we find one, two, three individual files. And then line 83 starts a inline JavaScript. So let's click on that. And that appears to be what we're looking for, because it's talking about this hash change event. So let's see what this piece of code does. When a hash change event is detected, it will run the function below. And the function below is actually just these two lines. And what it does is it will look for the HTML element section of class ID blog list, and it's looking for all the H2 headers within. And it's then looking for the first one that would match the input here in window location.hash.slice. Uh, and it will URI decode that as well. And we can see here there's the section HTML element, the class blog list, and we have all these H2 headers here, which are the block titles. So it's looking for a match based on one of these strings here. And then if it finds it, it's going to scroll that blog post into view. So let's try that out. Let's switch to the application and go to the bottom of the homepage. Pick one of the titles here. Let's go with the longest one. I'm at a loss without it, leaving your smartphone behind. That's a healthy thing to do. Let's go back to the top. Uh, let's go with that. So slash, and then we hit the dash character and we paste the title. And if we hit enter now, we should be going to the blog at the bottom, which we do. Scrolled into view because of the code. Um, when we go back to the top and we hit enter again though, it doesn't happen. So we stay at the top no matter what we do. If we refresh, we paste it into a new tab. It does, it does nothing. This is because the hash change event is not triggered. If we would say behind two and hit enter, well, nothing happens because that block title doesn't exist. But when we change it back now, that will trigger the hash change event and we'll go back down to the bottom. So that, that'll be important to remember later on when we want to send this payload or send the payload to our victim because that will be one of the requirements. We know how the hash change event works now, how it's triggered. We also know what this part does, how the H2s are selected. We, we've seen the behavior where we scroll into view of the matching block title. Now let's look at this part here. So if I go to the browser, rem remember we have hash, I'm at a loss without it, leaving your smartphone behind. This is our URI fragment here. If I go back to debugger and then to console. Let's say window.location.hash. This is the URL encoded or URI encoded value of I'm at a loss without it, leaving your smartphone behind. Uh, let's see that it starts with a hash sign. If we would add a slice one to it, it would skip the hash sign. And then in the debugger, we could also see there was a decode URI component to it. So let's do that window.location hash.slice one. Enter, and then we can see the URI decoded um, value that comes after the hash. And it's this string that it's looking for within the H2. Let's copy this. Uh, debugger, first for this, you can see this blog post right here. If we go to the browser and we just, instead of this, we enter a hash, baby Guinness, hit enter. Now you go back to the console, to console, let's clear this. And window location.hash is actually baby Guinness. So this is like an input that we can control. All we need now is some type of function that will execute our input. 
And for that, we have the jQuery selector function that's being used here. Remember from the lab description, it said that we're using a vulnerable version of jQuery. And when I Googled this, I could find indeed that the, this version is vulnerable to a specific kind of vulnerability where the code that is passed into here, into the selector function, will also try and create HTML elements if the element that it's looking for here within the CSS selector isn't found. So that's very handy for us because what that means is that we could pass in, instead of baby Guinness, we could pass in an HTML element with a event, which is JavaScript. So we can say source equals one, which is invalid, and then which will throw an error. And then on error as event, we can say print and hit enter. And as you can see, we get the pop-up. But as we saw before, it doesn't work if we send the payload again because the hash change, nothing changes here. So the hash change event isn't triggered and the jQuery selector function isn't triggered again to execute this code. It's only when this line changes and we hit enter that we get some form of hash change event triggered and that the pop-up comes up again. So it's not enough for us. Let's say if we just send this link to our uh, victim and we get the victim to click on it, it's not enough because it doesn't trigger the hash change event. What we would need to do is find a way to, for example, load in this URI first, and then after it's finished loading, we add this payload to the URI. And that would trigger a hash change event from this, just this, to this entirely. And that would trigger our uh, cross-site scripting payload. So let's go to the exploit server. Let's craft our payload here in the body. So we're gonna use an iframe source equals, let's set it to empty for now. And let's close out the iframe as well. Let's go back to the source. Our source will be the link to our lab plus the hash sign here. So let's copy it entirely and paste that in. And then we're gonna add an unload event here where we'll say, take whatever's in the source already. So this part, and then we're going to append our image source equals one payload to it. So let's append and we'll append it as a string. So we'll set the image tag where source equals one on error equals print. And this is fine. Let's view this exploit. And we get, we see the iframe loaded here and we get the print pop up. So if we would send this to our victim, it would work. I don't like this because the iframe is showing in a real situation, we want this to be hidden. Let's fix that. Hidden equals hidden. Let's view this exploit now. And we can see the iframe here is no longer visible, but we still get the pop up. So if we look at the source, the iframe is here. Go back. And if we deliver this to the, the victim, that'll work. Yep, we have solved the lab. And the reason is the this will get loaded in first with the hash line at the end. Then this part, the image part, will be appended to it. That will trigger the hash change event. Then this part will be sent to the jQuery selector function, which because it's a vulnerable version of jQuery, it will try to add this as an HTML element on the page and it will then trigger this source equals one, which is invalid, which will trigger the error, which will trigger the print function here. And that's why this exploit works. Thanks for watching.